Good to be in New York City. Welcome, Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey! Have we got a great show for you tonight. Just not going to believe it. Every now and then, we really pay attention to that www.foodnetwork.com on the Emerald page. What are you thinking? What do you want? What are you requesting? So here's this whole show. We're going to get steamed tonight. Yeah. No, really. We're talking about steamed shrimp, steamed cabbage, even steamed dessert. Better known as steamed cuisine. <laughs> hey, speaking about steamed cuisine, we got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band. Getting a little steamy in here, isn't it, boys? <laughs> getting a little steamy in here. We're getting ready to steam up the joint right here on Emerald Live. We're gonna have some fun here tonight. How you folks doing? Great. Welcome, ladies. How you doing? Great. See, these are the good seats. <laughs> it's not the cheap seats. Boy, all the kinds of things that you can uh, steam. Let me tell you what we're gonna steam tonight. I'm feeling a little steamy already. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to steam a halibut fillet. It's gonna get its flavor. See, that's the thing when you steam. It's not just steam anymore. It ain't just like put water in a pot and steam it up, you know? It's about flavoring. I'm gonna show you how to enhance those flavors. This halibut, by the way, we're gonna flavor it with lemongrass and a little sake for a little lemongrass and sake steam. <laughs> and a little sake soy glaze and a little BAM! I'm going to show you how to do these delicious pork and sausage cabbage, cabbage rolls that we're going to steam in a garlic steam. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Talking about kicking it up, dessert. Where do you see this steamed rum raisin custard? <laughs> But first, I'm going to show you one of my favorite, especially this time of the year, another really, really, really delicious appetizer. Sort of you get to eat it and drink it at the same time. I'm going to use beer to steam some shrimp. Yeah. All right. You know, when you look around, there's all kinds of steamers. It's really a great, healthy, simple way to cook food, keep a lot of the vitamins in it, particularly with vegetables. But everybody's got to make it like a, this big deal about steaming. So hopefully we're going to uh, eliminate some of that. I'm going to show you. First of all, I'm going to make my own sort of steamer right here. I've got one of those old-fashioned steamers that you, you know, you probably have one of these somewhere in your kitchen. You know, you might think it's like a fan, you know, for Miss Daisy. There I was. <laughs> no, you know, Doc, a lot of people, they have these. They don't, they don't really know the treasure that they have, wow. you know. Uh, this is a steamer, old-fashioned type. You can make it as small as you want. Then there's the fancy bamboo steamers. But it's all what's in the liquid. So I got my simple pot going on here. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take a beer. Oh, yeah. See? Vapor. <laughs> take a little more. 
<laughs> See these beautiful shrimps? We're very fortunate in Louisiana to have beautiful shrimps like this good part of the year. But you see, they're not happy right now. We're gonna make them a little happier by doing, by doing that. Then we're gonna take some garlic, whole garlic cloves that I just smashed and just gonna put them in the beer. And then this stuff right here. Ooh, this will make you cry. <laughs> this is very dangerous stuff. This is, a, this is the concentrated liquid crab and shrimp oil. We use these to sort of perk it up a little bit. And then they have a spice one, too, that comes in a pack. How much do you use? About that much, because that much is going to make your eyes water. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that. And look, we're already gut. You smell that already? Huh? Oh, I'll tell you, it'll knock your lights out. Now, I don't know where you get your beer where I get mine, it doesn't come seasoned. So I gotta add a little bit of salt in here. Maybe to kick it up one more notch. Let's add a little essence. Oh yeah. <laughs> smell that already? Oh yeah, when you start, you cook with this stuff in your kitchen, you walk around like this. <laughs> Then you start talking like this all of a sudden. Anyhow. No, that stuff will make... Can you smell it already? I oh, smell yeah. it, all man. All right. All right, look, we're going to put the steamer in here. Take some essence. We're going to steam our shrimp. <laughs> Folks. I'm not joking. Some of them in the front row here can really smell it. That crab boil, I'm telling you, you don't want to overdo it. It's sort of got like these mustard and there's all kinds of spices in that, but it's concentrated. It really will wake you up, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Traditional tartar sauce, ketchup, horseradish, lemon juice, little Worcestershire, a little hot sauce for these delicious, delicious beer steamed shrimp. Guess what? When we come back, another notch! Back yeah. this! Got the unbelievable cliff on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Our dear friend Lewis on horns. Got the amazing Charles on bass. We call him, we call him TT for terrific Teddy on drums. Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Doc Gibbs! Yeah. All right. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're cooking with steam tonight, or at least letting some off. <laughs> so uh, we made a very traditional cocktail sauce, ketchup, horseradish, that would be fresh horseradish, lemon juice, Lee and Perrins, or Worcestershire, and then uh, we kicked it up a few notches with some hot sauce as well. Taste it. You want more horseradish? You want more spice? You want more Lee and Perrins? You can funkify it, too. <laughs> yeah. Put some carrot in there, 
cilantro. The great thing about this is that it's not going to take very long to steam these shrimps. So you can either go the more formal way if you'd like, or basically you can go informal and just knock your lights out with some newspaper like this. You see what I'm saying? There we go. All right. <laughs> this stuff is strong, but boy, do they make it taste good. So when you're ready, you can go back in for the steamer or you can build your plate. Can you smell them? <laughs> boy, the great thing about also working with a steamer, folks, it prevents a lot of overcooking of food as well. Because you basically can see, like when I'm going to show you this halibut dish next. I love that whole peel and eat thing too. Oh yeah. Yes. You know, it's a good thing that peel and eat thing. Just kind of peel and eat. Okay, so beer shrimp is the first steam dish that we have. Traditional cocktail sauce, unlike the funkified cocktail sauce. And it'll be a good spice to that. Little lemon wedges. And there you have it, folks. That simple, okay? Now look, you got to make friends over there too, so. <laughs> now I'm going to show you a little bit more traditional steamer. And that's the bamboo steamer. Pretty inexpensive. Has a top. And then basically it has layers like this. Sometimes they're slotted like this so that you can even have them round. The great thing about this is you can buy as many as you want. You can stack them to the moon. I think I have the Guinness Book or whatever that's called. I think I went about 57 stories one time. I was hungry. So how you want to build this now, just to show you, is this. We're going to use beautiful halibut that we got from the fishmonger today. Beautiful halibut, pearly white, no smell whatsoever. If you go somewhere and buy fish and it smells, leave it there. <laughs> I'm going to do something really, really cool with this thing too. Beside, here's what we're going to do. Beside this glaze for this halibut that I'm going to show you how to steam, talk about delicious, the water that we're going to use Again, I'm going to make sort of the base of this. What I'm going to do is I took fresh ginger, not Mary Ann, but ginger. <laughs> and I just didn't peel it, I just sliced it. And I'm going to use that to start fusing the water a little bit. Then, this is lemongrass, okay? And it has a lot of flavor, but you got to know what to do with it. I got like bushes of this stuff in my yard, but. Well, that's another story. <laughs> so what you want to do is this. You got to cut the lemongrass in order for it to get the flavor out of it, OK? It's like pretty hard stuff. But boy, let me tell you something. Does it flavor this? Makes great sauces, too. So now we've got lemongrass and a little ginger in the water. <laughs> Mm, mm. Then, we're going to have a little sake, okay? A little sake in here. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start building up the steamer now, okay? I wish you could smell it in here. It's smelling really good. 
The heat, also important. You don't have to, like, jack it up full blast every time you cook something, you know? Use your knob. <laughs> See? High, medium, medium, low. There's a reason why they made these. <laughs> so now I got mine here on about medium heat. Too much, too fast. So also you'll notice that what I did to layer one of my things here is I put some lettuce leaves. See that? I'm still going to get the steam, but nothing's going to fall apart and go through it and be nasty. Because here's what we're going to do. In the sauce pot, I told you about this glaze. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take soy sauce. Yeah, yeah. Cooking over here. <laughs> going to take mirin, okay, which is basically sweet and sake. Okay, mirin. It's like the cooking liquid. Oops. <laughs> and then sake. Then what we're going to do is bring this up to a boil. Then we're going to let it simmer. And then it's going to start evaporating. Then it's going to get concentrated in flavors. And it's going to evaporate, concentrate in flavors, till we get like a sauce. And that's what I have right here. It's been reduced down, and it's made this, this sort of mirin sake sauce, right? With me so far? Have I lost anybody on the journey? OK. Now. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, and inside that as well, beside the sake, mirin, and soy sauce, some brown sugar, about a good cup of brown sugar, OK? Inside of that. Now, see the steam's happening? We're going to take the halibut in our reduced sauce. We're going to dip it in here. Oh, God. <laughs> And we're going to put it in the steamer. See that? Could you imagine being dipped in there? <laughs> I would love that. All right, I'm going to start steaming this halibut with this great mirin and soy sort of glaze, OK? I'm going to also put on the top wrap some asparagus. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Don't even think about touching that dog. <laughs> cuisine tonight. Yeah, we're steaming it up. We got some steamed beer shrimp. Woo! Oh, oh don't be bashful. <laughs> and uh, halfway through, or you could do it more often if you'd like. One thing about steam, it's just that. It's live steam. So be very, very careful you don't go burning yourself. That's the biggest problem when you're using steam equipment. As you can see, I've steamed some beautiful asparagus. I've also steamed some rice during the commercial break. And then what I want to do now is I want to check on our halibut. But more importantly, what I want to do is bring it to another level or, you know, another notch, you know. <laughs> So now what I want to do while it's steaming before it's completely cooked is I want to baste with some of that mirin and some of that soy food of love stuff. Oh, yeah, I'd be happy, too, if this was being brushed. I'm not going there. Anyhow. So it is just about cooked, as you can see, or steamed. Now, we're going to let it go one more minute. However, 
If you like sesame seeds, okay? Yeah, I do too. We could add some toasted sesame seeds on these now, okay? <laughs> toasted sesame seeds. All right, then basically when we're ready to go, here's what I like to do. We'll just sort of take our steamed rice. Mm -hmm. One for you, one for me, one for me. One for me, one for you, and another one for me. And then we're going to add some asparagus on here. And then we're going to add our fish right on top of that. Our steamed halibut. That's how we're going to do it. Hey, don't even think about touching that dial when we come back. More steamed cuisine. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> in the Emerald Live Band. Yes, welcome back. Hey, if you're just joining us, I'm Emerald Lagasse, and it's all about steamed cuisine tonight. And uh, I waited just for you. I got the steamed rice. You saw it. I got the steamed asparagus. I cheated. I basted two more times during the commercial. Our soy, mirin, sake. Oh, look at that. You know, if you have the time... You can sort of let that, I, what I do sometimes, if I got the time, I'll put that inside of a, a zip bag and uh, do it overnight. It even gets a more intensified. Look at how light and delicious that halibut looks. Oh, look, and don't worry about, you don't have to call like 911 if it like falls apart like that. <laughs> so then I just sort of do a little family platter of the halibut like such. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. So you got to... It's messy, it's messy, it's messy, it's messy, it's messy. Okay, okay, you got okay. it? I got it, got it, got it. So you wait till you taste that glaze with that mirin and stuff. Oh, you... man. Then what wow. I do is I just come back like this, folks, and just paint it a little bit more. Actually, I cheat and just... Oops! Oops. You tried. Bam, 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 bam. There you have it. It's set. All right. You always got to check the water, too, down there to make sure that you got enough liquid, whatever it is. Don't think that it's just, you know, it's evaporating and that it's got, like, its own uh, refill tank on there. So every now and then you got to check to make sure that you got enough liquid. What I did with that liquid is I took some cabbage leaves, just took whole cabbage, took the leaves, peeled them back, and I steamed them in there just until they were really, really pretty. Just steamed them. That's what I have here, steamed cabbage leaves. Then I want to make a little filling to put in that. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little butter. Some onion, little bell pepper. We're going to get that started. A little salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some fresh ground pepper. Then once we start getting the flavor out of the onions and the bell pepper, 
three, four minutes. Then what we're going to do is take a little bit of ground pork. Oh, yeah, babe. Just <laughs> hypnotized. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just start adding pieces of ground pork in here. Meanwhile, in the sauce pot in front of me, what I have here going is a very straightforward tomato sauce. Okay? Just straightforward tomato sauce, which is going to be a great accoutrement. <laughs> Love that. For this pork cabbage roll. See how I'm breaking it up in pieces? Most people, what they do is they just put the whole chunk of meat in there, even though it's ground, and then they never really get any even browning. You know, by the time the outside and the outside and the inside, it's just, you know, I guess you had to have been there. <laughs> the reason why I brought up the tomato sauce is because I'm eventually going to add just a touch inside of this mixture. So... What I did is I took about maybe a cup out of that. Oh no, it's got a new battery in there. And we're gonna start browning the pork now. Now, once the pork gets brown, I've got a little cooked rice, cup to two cups, depending on how much rice to meat mixture you want. Some kielbasa sausage. Why? I'm in a kielbasa mood. <laughs> and then there's that almost two cups or so of that tomato sauce that I took out of that. So once the meat gets brown, I'm going to add it back into the bowl to let it cool. And then I'm going to add those other ingredients. You with me so far? Okay, when we come back, I'll show you exactly what cabbage rolls look like. Stick around. Black kids. Again, halibut, I wouldn't wait just for the halibut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, Rhoda. <laughs> now, I got the filling made, took the ground meat, bell pepper, onions, a little salt and pepper, took it off, put it in the bowl, added the kielbasa, ordered the cooked rice, added a little bit of that tomato to kind of give it that little moisture, you see? Now, if you don't want to mess around with this, you can just eat it like this. Forget it. <laughs> but to make these rolls, we got our steamed cabbage. So what we do is this. See, a lot of people, this core right here, they take it out. Well, to me, it depends how thick it is. If it's not too, too thick, I leave it in. Because, I mean, you know, it's... Do you want to, like, nosh on a core? is the question. So if it's a little thick, what I do is just take a paring knife like this and without destroying the whole leaf, just sort of like on an angle like that. See, I don't know if you... Yeah, I'll save it for the subway. <laughs> so then you kind of want to do this just like you're going to fold or roll up an egg roll, depending on how thick you're going to have this. Okay, so we got the meat mixture here. 
We've got a shot of this here, fellas. Now, we kind of go over once. Tuck it in. Go over twice. Now, just like an egg roll, you sort of want to fold that side in. And you want to fold that side in, which is going to make a pocket to hold it in there. Jay, everything all right over there? Leave the poor lady alone. <laughs> she didn't come to see you. <laughs> and then you fold it over like that, and you've got this wonderful cabbage roll. Okay? Now, oh, thanks. All right, now, I told you earlier, what we're going to do, I told you earlier, see, you get these long towels like this, and look, I just got plain old water in there. How boring is that going to be, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add some parsley in there. Hilda will be really happy. And look at this. Hey, I told you I was going to steam it with some garlic. Add about 100 cloves in there, right? Oh, yeah. After it's done, I'm just going to drink it. Mm. So we want to... Fuse it. I wish you could smell this. You know what? I don't know what's up in this country anymore. I mean, you should call your cable company and complain you don't have smell of vision <laughs> I wouldn't stand for it anymore. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take... I'm using uh, little cabbage leaves on here. Now what I'm going to do, folks, is this. We're going to line up our steamer with some of these cabbage rolls. Steam them up real good. And then I'll show you how we're going to serve them. You all with me so far? Yeah. All right, so look. Oh, wait. Shh. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Got to keep in practice. All right. I'm going to show you how to use the steamer now for dessert, which you're totally going to think that I'm lost my mind here. Again, check. We got liquid. You know what would be good to flavor that water with would be some vanilla. Oh, we're on to something here. Do they have that at the spars? Vanilla steam? Not yet. Coming soon. Oh, you look so pretty today. I had a vanilla steam. <laughs> All the little vanilla bean dots. You know? <laughs> Anyhow. So, I took some butter and sugar and did a cooking term called creaming. That's exactly what stage we're at right now. Which means that we've really got it together and it's gotten soft. Then I took a souffle mold or oven to table mold, buttered it. Okay, that's what I got. I just buttered it. And then I macerated. Not marinated. <laughs> macerated some raisins. What I did is I just took raisins and covered them with rum. And then they come back and they get all plump, full of rum. How lucky. <laughs> then I'm letting that drain. Now here's what we're going to do. Gonna add a couple of eggs. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Nice folks, you know, I don't wanna decorate them. <laughs> Just gonna turn it down a little bit. We're gonna add the zest of a lemon. We're gonna add some flour, some AP flour, all purpose flour. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly start adding some milk. making a batter. Now, one of the things that you got to do, especially when you're baking, getting this incorporated right here, you see, you got you to turn it off. You got to scrape down the side of the bowl because that way it's all going to incorporate evenly. If not, you're going to have lumps. If you don't care about the lumps, say, I don't either. So have a lump fest. Well, we're going to scrape it down. And then as we get it all nice and scraped, what we're then going to do is incorporate those soaked raisins in that. Now, 
We're going to take the batter out, and we're going to put it inside of our buttered ramekin. And then what I did with some parchment paper is I just made a circle. Oh, that's a lot bigger than this, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it. Once I put the batter inside, I'm going to cover it, and then I'm going to tie it. So I want it to steam, but I don't want the moisture to get inside of this, because then it'll separate. Does that make sense? Then when I get it tied, I'm going to put it right in here in our steamer. When we come back, I'm going to show you not only what the cabbages look like, but this incredible dessert, steamed pudding. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Back in. Welcome back, folks. We've steamed up the joint tonight. <laughs> steamed. Okay. Let's go back to the cabbage rolls for a little bit. You know, the meat basically is about 90% cooked. So now it's just really how you want to present it. Do you want to do it individual? Do you want to do it as an appetizer? Or do you want to do it as just sort of a, here, put it on the table. Now, here's what I like to serve it. Good catch. I didn't have as much luck as you did just a little while ago. So what we're going to do is take our delicious, chunky tomato sauce, and then OK. Then we're going to take those delicious cabbage rolls. <laughs> Yes. And that ain't going to work. Then what we're going to do is this, folks. We're going to just easily put one over here like that. Don't break them up. Don't those look good? Oh, yeah. Nice and steamed. Oh, yeah, babe. That would be a great portion right there for me. <laughs> now. Get the first batch going, and then you can easily just get the second batch going while you're waiting. But don't let them cool down. So what I do is I just take a little bit of cabbage. A little garnish. Oh, yeah, babe. Why waste it? A little more sauce. Put a beep, put a boop, put a beep, put a boop, put a boop, put a boop, put a boop. And then a little grated Parmesan cheese. Hey, there you have it. It works for me, folks, right there, huh? Oh, yeah, babe. What we've done, we've made a creme anglaise. It's like melted ice cream. A little creme anglaise sauce. Then to kick it up a notch, what we're going to do is add just a tiny bit of rum. <laughs> They'll all be doing it. Shh. Bobby Flay's next door. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is take that creme anglaise on the bottom of this plate like this. And then we're going to go in for our dessert. Look at that. 
Woo! Remember what I told you about that steam? Shh. Then what we're gonna do? Bam! <laughs> then basically, a little more creme anglaise like that. And then we'll get a little bit of mint leaf just like that. Doesn't that look great like that, huh? Yeah. Uh, bam, 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 bam. There you have it. Steam cuisine. Hey, is it getting a little steamy in here or what, huh? I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Guess what? See you tomorrow, everybody.